Hello everyone, it is White Rose Wednesday and I am your host, Shauna, for this little bit of a Facebook Live going over our fun junk journal book. Gonna tag some friends, hopefully we can get some people to join us. I am going to tag however many it will let me tag here. All right, looks like that is it. There's some friends. Hello, Christine and Rhonda and Marilyn and Grace. Hello, hello. I have been so excited to get back to working on this book, you guys. <laughs> That's how you know it's a great kit when you can't wait to work on it. <laughs> so here's how our book is looking so far. Got this fun cover. I think I'm still gonna do something on the edges, maybe maybe some ribbon or something. I did put the lace on and the lace turned out really nicely. I love it. Uh, dyed with that, um, what is it called? Sage, bundled sage uh, distress oxide. So that looks really fun, I love it. And um, I do have the Nouveau drops over these clock centers as well, just to give it a different look, some fun texture. We've got some brads here, so lots of fun textures going on, uh, especially with this lace mulberry paper. I just love that. And then this rice paper from Stamperia. And then on the inside, we have our little our little flip out here with some envelopes and we made these little DVD envelopes last time that were kind of little shakers. We put one of our rice paper pieces there. Hello, Ashley. And then uh, this is that Patalix paper that is just so amazing. I love it. I love the feel of it. I love the shine of it. Hello, Rita. Yay, lots of friends in the house today. <clears throat> Before I forget to tell you guys, uh, White Rose Crafts has a YouTube now, so we're trying to make some of these lives available over there as well. So if you prefer to watch on YouTube, you can definitely do that. We're not doing the live on YouTube yet, uh, but we are taking the live video once the live is over and putting it over there so you can definitely watch the replay. You can save it over there to all of your playlists, share it with all of your friends. Uh, we'd love for you to check that out. It's White Rose Crafts LLC on YouTube. You can definitely subscribe and hang out and do all the great things over there. Hello, Chris and Mary. Hello, hello. And there's Judy. Hey, hey. So now is kind of the fun part of the book. I get to go through and add some of these beautiful papers. Um, you can see I kind of have some things just clipped in here. Uh, this one is, um, this was just a tiny scrap and I just made a little tuck. So it's not a full pocket, it's just a little tuck. Um, so we're gonna go through and use some of our scrap berry paper and get some pages covered. Hey, hey, Christine. Two Christines in the house. We're gonna use some of our little wood pieces. We're gonna, uh, I've added some of these little index cards. So we're gonna decorate a little bit on those as well. And uh, what else are we gonna do? I don't know, we'll just see where that leads us. And we'll get some things done in this book because we've got a lot of blank pages to work with. So, and I haven't done anything really in the second signature yet, but we do have our, uh, our little shaker here and I did decide I wanted to put some of this um, mulberry paper over the washi tape because you can actually see it more than I thought it would be visible so hey hey Kim yay all my friends are here love it if you are seeing the red live button we are live 
and you are on the Facebook Live. If you don't see that red live button, that's okay too. Just hit hashtag replay. Let us know that you stopped by. Or maybe you're on Facebook, so you, you should uh, subscribe and leave a comment and let us know that you were here. Let us know if you have this kit and you're working along. I posted in the description box above the kit that I am using to create this junk journal with. It was um, put together by White Rose Crafts, of course, because we're in the White Rose Crafts Gallery. And um, I believe it is completely sold out. However, there are still ways you can get some of the items um, on the website. So I did put the links to all of that above. Hi, Sherry. And Debbie, hello, 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 hello. I am not seeing any comments. I'm seeing when people are getting here, so I don't know if anybody's commenting. I hope we're not having another one of those days because it is so lonely to craft by myself. <laughs> I love seeing your guys' comments, seeing what you are um, suggesting and what you're working on. All of those fun things, and I hope it lets me... I logged into Facebook the other day on my laptop which I don't do very often but I was so incredibly frustrated because they said guess what we've changed all kinds of things and they moved all of the buttons so I was so discouraged I just logged off because um, as somebody who is um, visually impaired it is so frustrating when they move the buttons around because a lot of my work is done just by muscle memory <laughs> Like I get, okay, I know the button is over here in the right corner and I will find it. <laughs> but now they moved everything and I don't know if I can move it back or not. I was just so discouraged. I'm like, this is not blind accessible. So I was having a whining moment, shut the laptop off. I don't even know what I was supposed to be doing over there, but I was, I was over it. <laughs> so I hope they don't make any more changes that change the screens or the orientation or the buttons or, oh, buddy. Okay. So I've got my wet wipe out. My glue is super sticky. And um, so I, I used the washi tape to kind of uh, put this a little extra support on our hinge here. And the one that I used was this one. I didn't think it would show as much as it did, and it did. So um, that was okay because it provided another opportunity to put in this beautiful mulberry paper that I love so much. So now we're going to flip back to the first signature. Hopefully those pages won't stick together. And uh, this one here is dry. You can kind of see those dots coming through, but it's not going to matter because um, I did cut down a piece of this scrapberry paper. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here. And we're going to make a fun little pocket. So this is just, uh, what is it? I think my cards are, this is almost five by almost five. It's just a square. So this I just cut to fit um, a little it's about four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And then I took my um, circle punch and did a half notch just to make that pocket. We're going to go ahead and put some ink on there. I'm using Vintage Photo today. I love the brown. I'm still not seeing any comments, guys. I hope I hope it, it last time when it did that and I couldn't see any comments, it just started coming back. Usually Kay and Ashley are in the comments though, helping everyone out, even if I can't see your comments. Um, so if you have questions about the products or about White Rose Crafts or their shipping or anything like that, um, usually Kay is in the comments and can help out with that. Okay, so you can also see we did some stamping here. Um, we're going to lose a little bit of it, but that's okay. Um, hi, Deborah. I can't see your comments. Hopefully it will give me comments back. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and glue around the three corners. I usually put my thumb where I do not want to glue uh, because we're making a pocket. So we're just going to go ahead and glue. Now glue is one of those things, it is very um, individual and whatever it is your preference. I know some people like to use a double-sided tape or a glue glider or whatever. Um, I, am, I have been trying out this Prima Gliding Glue and I really love it. Uh, there are all kinds of other glue options on the White Rose Crafts website. So if you are needing some of those staples like glue or ink or any of those things to add 
to your crafting stash, head on over to the White Rose Crafts website and uh, Kay can get you all squared away. Okay, so um, usually when I make pockets, the glue does seem to seep a little bit because I try to be, I don't know if I would say heavy handed, but I try to make sure I get a nice uh, amount of glue on the sides because if you're putting anything in there, you want it to be able to be sturdy and hold up. So I'm not gonna put anything in there just yet. We're gonna let it dry and uh, we're gonna keep moving on. Now, a lot of my pages, I don't, I don't really have a plan for per se. Um, once I get to this point, I just kind of let the papers inspire me and go from there. So, um, so there's that. <laughs> if I find um, a layout that I do and I love, um, I will do it again and again in the. Uh, in the book here. So I have some old vintage book pages and I do like to incorporate some of those. And this is a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, cover this here with some vintage book page. And, I, and it just tears beautifully because it is so old. Um, I usually don't do a lot of measuring in my junk journals and I like to do a lot of torn edges. Um, I just feel like it, it gives it that more junk journal feel um, if you don't like a torn edge, you definitely don't have to do one. Uh, I think it does add to the look. Um, some junk journals, though, are made to have like a cleaner look, like maybe they're more shabby chic. Um, if this one kind of has all of the the steampunk vintage vibes. Ah, oh, there's some comments. Yay! Okay. I can see you, Chris Tompkins, I can see you. <laughs> I'm not sure if they have anything horse or equestrian, but definitely Ashley or Kay can answer that question for you. Um, yay, I don't know why it takes so long to give me the comments sometimes. I don't know what it's doing, but I'm glad I can see them now. There we go, yay. Hi, Karen, yay, I can see you guys. I have a whole stamp period collection devoted to horses coming up this week. Ooh, how fun is that? I'm so excited for all of the new stamp period products. Cannot wait, cannot wait, cannot wait. There is an art one that I've got to get my hands on. Can't wait. Hi, Marilyn. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Okay, so this one, my envelope is kind of an off-white and... Um, you know, I mean, off-white is not a bad thing, but we definitely want to zhuzh it up a little bit, as they say. So I have some... Where to go? We've already been using this stamp. Somewhere, somewhere. I dropped it. There we go. Okay, so I have our little splatter stamp by Prima. Ooh, yeah, Chris, definitely watch that website. I, Kay has been very, very busy <laughs> trying to put all the new things that she got in. Like, uh, things arrived from, I think she said Italy and Poland all at the same time. And so she's trying to get everything all in there, all loaded to the website. It does take a long time to get things. Like, it's each item you put in there, it's a lot of effort for one item to put on the website, but... That's the way we sell, so you know, she will she will get it all cut up and done. She's awesome. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this around the edges. We're probably not gonna see a lot of this, but um, we do wanna get something. And I've been using, using this stamp a lot. I love it, um, especially throughout this book. And we're gonna try to get some right there on the edge. Uh, Prima has several of these stamps that are background stamps, and they are available on White Rose Crafts website. And guys, they're like a couple dollars. It's amazing. <clears throat> so, super cool. This is the one that comes with the junk journal kit, but there are others. And see how it just adds some interesting texture to the background back here. So I think this one, I'm going to put this book page back here. I do want to see if I can make some cute little, cute, but whatever, I don't know, some fun little like splatters. Just put some ink blobs. There we 
go. You can do that a lot of different ways. There's so many ways to splatter paint and ink. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of gently squish it down. There we go. Ooh, look at that. I got some really cool splatters there. Yes, Ideology Products, Tim Holtz. Just when we think we are good to go, Tim says, hey, I have a whole bunch of new stuff, and there goes our wallets. I know, I know. That darn guy, he's been doing that to me for years. Years. And I'll get one thing purchased and think, okay, with this one, I've got, like, I seriously, I have everything I need, and then he comes out with new stuff. <laughs> Donda, you're just in time. We are just... Uh, making a background here for this uh, this book. Ooh, and I'm I'm making a mess with paint already. Paint and it's not paint, it's ink. I am turning my hands this sage color. Hey Sharon, you're just in time too. Come on in, ladies. We are just playing with this junk journal. I am loving this kit. And um, we're just gonna go ahead and glue this down. Now you can make you you can make as many pockets as you want in here, guys. Um, this one's on a, a flap of the folio, uh, like an envelope flap. So I don't really want to make it too too heavy. But this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the background. And then I think maybe I'll make a pocket on the top of it. It's also nice to make sure you leave some room. Um, for whatever your book is going to be. Now, sometimes I get asked all the time, what do you do with these junk journals? Well, um, personally, I love to make them. <laughs> so that is definitely one thing. If, you know, if it brings you joy and it's not causing any harm to anyone else, then make away is what I say. Um, even if they're just for lookbooks or just for fun or just to get your art out, whatever the reason is. Um, but people do use them. You can put pictures in them. You can put journaling in them. Hi, Eileen! I have been missing you guys. I feel like I haven't chatted with you guys in a while. Uh, there is a video. Uh, I think it was two, two videos ago, Mary, that goes over what all comes in the kit. And um, you get a lot of papers, you get some rice paper, the Stamperia rice paper that's over here, you get some mulberry papers, you get some fun little uh, wooden trinkets and some charms, which we're going to add today. You get some buckles, you get this stamp. Um, you get this Distress Oxide ink uh, refiller, which we've been having lots of fun with. Oh no, you lost everything in the cart. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> I am one of those people that I love putting things in the cart. If I like it, I put it in the cart. <laughs> like it, put it in the cart. <laughs> my husband says that is my catchphrase. Add to cart. <laughs> so yeah, you do get a lot of things. You get some really fun scrap berry papers um, in this kit. And we're going to go ahead and use those. Um, it is this kit. It's the Mechanical Illusions. Um, so 12 sheets of 6x6 six six paper in here. And it's just got some absolutely fun um, steampunk vibes uh, in these papers. Kay says, all our kits come with a whole range of papers, specialty papers, embellishments, cutting dies, embossing folders. Oops, what, are, what did she say? Stencils, stamps, inks, and so on. Every kit is a limited edition, and the combination of items is always different. Um, if she posts the link to the page, I will pin it. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. I just, re I just had to redo them. My pink was a little worn out. Yes, yeah, steampunk is super fun. Even if it's not really your jam, it's just such little touches that it doesn't have to take over. Um, and if you like these colors or the clocks or the gears or whatever, uh, it is really fun to play with. I am loving it. So I did put in some little paper clips. I have some fabric that I just thought would match. And so I put those on there. And you can see it kind of holds this together, but it doesn't really have to hold it together because we've got some other fun stuff here. So this flips out, and then we can make some tags to put in there. And then um, 
I did add some fun little index cards. If you ever find these index cards with tabs, they are amazing for journaling cards. I absolutely love them. Let's chunk this one up just a little bit. Um, let's see, I've got two of them in here, I think. Let's find the other one and we'll work on them at the same time. And there is a fun stamp that we can use. There we go, there's the other one. Okay, so let's see, we'll just go ahead and pin this. I think that worked. Can you guys see the pin? Okay, so we're just going to set this aside for a second here. Somewhere, somewhere. And then um, you can just absolutely have fun with these. Um, so we did get another stamp in here. It is by Paper Parachute, and it looks like this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that on these index cards in addition to our fun little background stamp. Now these are kind of a little bit brighter blue than what I want to have, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, ink them and just have some fun. So we'll just obviously put some all around the edge. This is vintage photo. It does not come with your kit, but um, I believe it is still available. Kay has some wonderful bundles on the website that allows you to get your oxide inks and a refill, an ink refiller for a really good price. So check that out if you haven't already. Okay. So you can already see that kind of toned down that color just a little bit. We'll go ahead and do it on both sides because this is a great way to add some journaling cards. And um, it also gives you that line space, which I really like. And you can decorate these to match whatever you are working on. Now these ones I got at a vintage, um, in a vintage package at a thrift store. Um, I always watch for little index cards. I love using them as tags or journaling box, uh, journaling cards. And they're just a fun medium to play with and add to your books. So we're going to go ahead and um, stamp on this and then I'm going to add an eyelet and we're going to add some charms just because it's so much fun. Okay, so there's some ink there. And we can, of course, go ahead and use some of the, uh, some of this stamp here. I'm gonna put a little bit of it, actually, we'll just use this vintage photo again. I'm gonna put a little bit of this kind of come in from the edge. So you can see no real uh, rhyme or reason, doesn't have to be perfect but it definitely does add some, a little bit of some flair and interest. And that's the whole point of a junk journal. You want to make something very interesting to look at and work with. So we're just going to continue to add this in. And you know, you just do as much as till you think uh, it looks good. I kind of want this to be on the sides and the background because I'm gonna put one of those other stamps there. And I wanna leave room for journaling. Um, so I never really know the intent of my books because I don't know if I'm going to keep it or if I'm going to sell it or what I'm going to do with it. Um, so I try to leave lots of options with my books. Okay, so this is our little heart stamp. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to use some archival ink so it's a little bit darker. And so that it won't smear as I'm adding other things all around here. So just press this. And you can use an, uh, an acrylic block if you want to with these stamps. I'm just gonna use my fingers just because it's right here, it's convenient, it's good to go. I love that, look at that. Super fun. Then you can take some of your Nuvo drops and trace around some of these lines if you want to, or you can just leave it. I think that is fun. 
We'll do another one on this one right here. Now you could stamp these on another paper and then uh, cut them out so they have a little more dimension on your card if you want to. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna slide these in a pocket. So I wanna keep them fairly flat so they can slide right into a pocket. Okay, let's see. Yes, Jimmy Lou makes paper clips too. I make them several different ways. Um, Pre-release in the gallery before it goes in the general sale. Yeah, so make sure you are um, checking the gallery for posts and post your makes too. If you are working along with any of the products here, let us see what you are making. That is half the fun of being in these groups is so that you can see and ins inspire each other. <clears throat> Let's see. So this was the one where I wanted this to go here. I think just adding those few little bits of ink really helped to tone down that blue and make it look like it's a little better fit. Okay. And when you have little scraps of ribbon like this, you can just add them to like the sides. Um, you, you don't wanna glue it right on your card that's supposed to be moving out. So just be careful of that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and punch some holes there for some eyelets. And then we will put a little bulb pin and add a charm. So when you get your kit, there is so many things in the kit that you can use to make a beautiful junk journal. Um, but also know you can add some of your own things too. And, um, you know, it doesn't include all of the basics. Like they're, they're assuming that you have your glue and your scissors and your basic tools that you would need to get going. So um, just keep that in mind. But it is an awesome kit that comes with so many fun goodies. And I absolutely love the colors. Um, I love steampunk, so... I'm all in. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go ahead and do some of these smaller eyelets, which I haven't done for a while. I've been using mostly the bigger ones, but I really think these, these colors will go well. Oh, perfect. Yeah, the stamp is available, and um, I believe those uh, Prima stamps are available as well. There's several different ones, and I love a majority of them. Um, they are great for adding background and interest to any of your junk journals or paper crafting products or projects. If you put something in your cart like this kit, should you complete the checkout? Right away to be safe. I know I want to look around the other items. Can your order be combined for shipping? Ooh, yeah, that's a K question. I don't know that one. I do know the, um, you can do a pre-order of the kits though, I think she said. Let's see, these are a little different shades. Actually, I think that might be okay for some interest. We'll just put some different colors of like metal colors. This one match, or is it different? Let's see. Whoops. Uh, those two do match. So try and find another one like that, or we'll move the different one to the middle. There we go, I found three that matched, yay. All right, now I have to try not to tip them over. So this tool is called a crocodile. If you need tips on using this uh, specific tool to set your eyelets, um, I do have videos on that on my YouTube channel, Fraps and Scraps, and also on Facebook. Um, I love a crocodile, but there are, you know, a few trips, tips and tricks to using it. So once you've got those down, it is good to go. Oh, 
Okay, so there we go. We've got all three eyelets set and they're not going anywhere. We'll close this box so I don't tip it over. That would be a huge... What is it doing? There we go. Sorry, guys. I don't know why it said trying to connect. Ooh, you just bought a crocodile. Awesome. I love mine. I use it all of the time. One of my most used tools. Okay, so we're going to set this guy aside and then figure out some fun charms to put in here. Let's see what comes... What comes with our kit? Oh look, somebody was looking for a horse. There is a horse charm. And this one, I don't know what this one is. Oh, I think it's like a motorcycle or something. I love this coin. I think we're gonna clip that coin right in there. Oh no. Yeah, um, what kind did you get, Sharon? Send me a picture of it. Maybe I can send you some tips. Um, just send me a private message. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put um, a bolt pin in there. You can use uh, all kinds of different ways to attach your charms. You can use bulb pins. You can use, um, you know, you could just use a brad and clip it right on in there. You can use uh, jump rings all kinds of fun ways to add your uh, little charms. I think we're going to go ahead and use a black one. Okay. Yeah, split rings. You can use chain, paper clips. Um, all kinds of fun ways to attach these beautiful charms. I love them. And they just add a really fun, um, you know, extra element of interest to your books. And, you know, you can clip it in the center. You can clip it through two of them. Uh, you can use safety pins to clip them on. Let's see, is that far enough? I was kind of hoping it would kind of wrap around here and just dangle at the bottom. Perfect. You can clip them to lace. You can clip it to your, you know, whatever. Oops, let's see. And you can clip it at the end of one. You can clip it anywhere. Anywhere. Anywhere is fun. Okay, so we've got that one in there. And you can add all kinds of little clusters to your uh, pages to decorate them. I think for right now, I just kind of want to get um, some more things in there. Oh, look, I had that lace clipped here and it kind of left a little impression of um, ink there. How fun is that? So I will go ahead and um, put that lace there eventually. Yes, I love my crocodile. I it is one of my most used tools. I think um, it, I have many of them, and they are always near me when I'm crafting. Um, even if I go go somewhere and I'm crafting, I take them with me. <laughs> At least one is with me all the time. Okay, so let's see what else we can do with some of this beautiful paper. And I love these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the second signature. You guys will see me flip um, from one signature to the next quite often. And the reason I do that is because, um, oh, we already did do a page back here too. Um, I feel like sometimes you work in, in one signature and you work all the way through it. And then you get to the second one or the third one or however many that you have. And you kind of lose your steam a little bit. You might be short on, you know, the the papers that you're using or you might be short on supplies or or whatever it is time you just want to get it done maybe you know maybe you've been working on it for a while and so my suggestion is to do a page in one signature then do a page in the next one then do a page in the next one and so on because um, it really does help to make sure you have enough materials to get you through the book and uh Yes, crocodile and a corner rounder. Perfect. Those are wonderful staples to buy. Yes. And then, you know, of course, 
you can't you can't miss out on some of these beautiful papers from white rose crafts i just just love them so these are some of the papers that we still have yet to use and i put kind of a brown one on uh, the the back of this one on the the first signature so i might do that again here and this is where it really gets fun because you get to start seeing your book come to life with all of these beautiful papers. Now, if you're not a major, you can um, just, you know, make some lines around here to, to trim. You can kind of fold it where you want to trim it and then just trim it uh, using scissors or paper trimmer or even tearing it. When I am... Uh, trimming down some of these six by six papers I try to make sure when I'm cutting that I keep the most amount of paper available to use elsewhere so I try to make bigger scraps I guess is what I'm trying to say so you can see I cut my paper like this and I kept this kind of intact in case if I want to use it as a trim uh, or whatever my needs might be. So this one here, I'm just gonna glue in and I'm gonna go ahead and notch. And this is just using a circle punch. This is I think a one and three quarter inch circle punch, but you can even um, trace something circular and just punch it out. Cut it out with your scissors or whatever that you have okay and then we'll go ahead and glue around the three sides and we have another beautiful pocket there also is a an unboxing of this kit on ek gorman's uh, youtube E.K. Gorman Designs. You can see everything that came in the kit. Um, she doesn't do any creating with the kit, just uh, showing you everything that's in there. Okay, so that one it's in there. I love this. Look at this hot air balloon fun goodness. It's got all kinds of gears and great things. This was just coffee dyed paper. Took some of my cardstock, dipped it in coffee, <clears throat> and then cooked it in the oven. Cooked, like just dried it in the oven. I live in Washington State, so there's no way of uh, drying anything outside at this time of year. Everything here is wind and rain and... Um, yeah, putting it outside would not be good. <laughs> okay, so on the other side, I did um, some fun ink, and then we put some of this. Now, you can use your 6x6 six six papers here. 6x6 six six is such a great size for this style of book. Um, you can make some side pockets. You can make a pocket like this way. You can um, just leave them whole, mostly whole, like this, and cover the whole page. Um, you could still make a tuck at the top if you wanted to, but just leave it as a good place to put some photos, like a photo mat. And I love that. Let's see. I don't like that because this would cut that off. So, and you know, just rotate your papers around until you find the orientation or the piece of the paper that you like and want to use um, on your paper. Ooh, look at this one. I love this. I think I have it upside down. Looks like a little, like a map of a town with all these gears. It's so beautiful. So that would be fun right there. Let's see, I'm gonna keep going in here and see what else we can do. And then once you get some little scraps, I love making little clusters. Let's see. And there is some awesome stickers. I think they're from Japan that come in this kit as well. I've already pulled out a few that I would really like to include. So let's take a look at those. 
because I think these are, they're almost like, um, like vellum or washi and they have a really cool texture to them and then you just peel them apart and stick them on. So these are super fun. And this one's like a labels. So cute, I love that. And there's a whole packet of them. So you can see there's um, some gold ones, there's other flowers and butterflies. Yeah, they're vellum. Okay, that's what they are. Yeah, they're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, you know, even on your little shaker piece here, you could put some of those over here and it's not going to take away from any of the shakery shakes in there. Uh, super cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just find... You know, even on these pieces of ledger where you don't need a lot because you want to be able to write or do something like that, you could put put one of these here. Just maybe ink and add some of these stickers. Hey, hey, TC. Welcome in. We are working with this junk journal kit and having some fun in my book today. So, like, if you have a piece like this, you could put one of these, like, right there, too. This is a little bit big, maybe, for this piece, but there is so many stickers in there to choose from. So, uh, definitely fun to use. Now, this one's just a little wallet card. This is a 3 by 4 and the corners are rounded, and then that circle's taken out. Thank you so much! Um, so, lots and lots and lots of fun papers. I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see. Let's get some more paper in, in here. Yes! No worries. No worries. We do not mind that you are popping in when you are. We love it that you're here hanging out with us. So this is just a piece of packaging. So if you get, you know, packaging paper from any company, not just Amazon or whatever, but from anywhere, um, save it. I like to straighten it out a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and do some inking on it with our sage ink and we'll make it look a little fun. So I just take an acrylic block, put a little bit of this ink on here. Now you guys are going to see some, I have a stamp on the, the back side, but that doesn't hurt anything. So I just put a little bit of this on here and um, a little bit of water. Whoops, a little bit of water. <laughs> There we go, and we'll just kind of smush, smush it around, splash it around, and then um, you can use a paintbrush if you want to. I just kind of like to let it do its thing here, and you can see the fun oxidized colors that you get when you add water to oxide ink. And then I just like to kind of smear it on this paper. This packaging paper takes it really well. Um, and it makes some really cool and fun uh, papers. So we'll do a little bit more. Then you can also add like your um, vintage photo or something over this. And you can even stamp, you can do whatever you wanna do just to add some fun backgrounds. So you don't have to smear it, you can splotch it just like this and get some more of this fun. I love using this ink. Um, we'll just smear some of it off. And if you wrinkle up your paper a little bit, you'll get some of those fun creases and the ink will pick up those lines. So if that's the kind of look that you're going for. Now this paper is super thin, so it did leak through just a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Um, the more ink around and fun things like that you can get naturally on your own, organically, or whatever you want to call it, is super cool. I think it's great. Whoops, gonna add some of this. Now, some of these books, you, you can play in them forever. <laughs> so that's why they make things that are called art journals. And you can just, you know, open the book and have a play on any of the pages that are in there or create some new ones if you're feeling so inspired. Um, you know, super fun. So don't forget to use your inks in addition to those stamps. Uh, you can definitely create some fun and cool, unique backgrounds. And then these pages are totally yours and yours alone. Like nobody can totally duplicate them. Okay, so a lot of times when I create my books, my pages are hanging over the edge. 
And I leave them like that until I've decided what I'm gonna do with them. So, um, oh man, it's one of those throw everything on the floor days today. Um, I was teasing my husband, told him I need some gutters on my table. <laughs> um, so I leave them like this until I decide what I'm gonna do with them. So a lot of times I will um, fold them in like this so I can have a nice fun flap to work with or I might use some decorative scissors. I might trim them down. Um, so these ones that we just did are definitely too long. So, you know, on this one, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and tear it. And then we can save this little scrap of paper here. The color of the ink is called Bundled Sage and it came in the kit. And the, oh, and then I used Vintage Photo on top of that. Uh, but the Bundled Sage did come in the kit, and I am loving it. Okay, so then we can use this piece, like somewhere else, somewhere that doesn't have much going on, like maybe on this piece of ledger. We can add this little scrap of paper here, and then we can also add some other scraps as we create them. So I love making little... Um, I guess it'd be called like a little border piece or whatever. So we'll just go ahead and put some glue on here. So that took care of like two things at once. It, uh, well three, it created this background, which is awesome. And then it uh, gave us this little trim piece and it trimmed down that page that I needed to decide what to do with. Yeah, I really love this bundled sage. Um, it's a really nice, really nice fun color to work with. It's um, Distress Oxide. Oh, and it's available in the bundle deal as well. Awesome. So if you are needing a source for your inks, the White Rose Crafts website has awesome bundle deals, like I said. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and glue that in there. This does have a little hole, so I want to be careful of that. And I think I'm going to put one of those stickers on the back. Let's choose one here. That would be great to catch. Need sideboards on you to stop from falling. And something to stop from dropping oh, dropping everything. Yes. That's what I said. I need some gutters on my table and just be really great. <laughs> yeah, the bundled sage is a really soft color. It's perfect. Um, and I'm really loving adding it with water because then you get that fun oxide effect. Okay, let's see. Let's choose. I just want I just want a small sticker. Ooh, look at this butterfly. It's like perfect in steampunk. I think I might add both of those right there. Okay. No. Oh, I know you guys like mushrooms. There are even mushrooms in here and leaves and little documents, all kinds of beautiful stickers. Hey, hey, Margie, welcome in. Okay, so let's put this, I think I just wanna put the sticker by itself actually. Yeah, the oxide inks do have some really great colors and they just keep coming out with more. Gotta love that Tim Holtz. <laughs> Just when you think you've spent enough money on Tim Holtz, he comes out with something else. Okay. Ooh, that's beautiful. It just applies on there really nice. I love it. So that goes with our paper collection beautifully. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my ink and just kind of um, go over those edges and all around. Give it a little pop of vintage photo back there. Perfect, I love that. <laughs> you missed the first edition, <laughs> want a second one. She probably will put together some other kind of a junk journal kit um, in the future, I don't know. I know she does a lot of card kits and the card kits can be used to make cards 
or other paper crafting items. So um, definitely watch the kit section. And she said they will be uh, pre-released here in the White Rose uh, Craft Gallery group first. So now look at this. I love how this is drying. When you use water with your oxide inks, um, you kind of get two tones. And then I added a little bit of that vintage photo over it. So we've got like three colors coming in here, really just from uh, the bundled sage and the vintage photo. So super fun. Don't forget to get it wet, you guys, because that is one of my favorite ways to play with oxide inks. Um, okay. Keep saying we're going to get more of this beautiful paper on the page, and we don't. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's do it. Let's put something green here because uh, we've got this green over here. And I love this. What uh, wooden charms do we have in here? all kinds of fun wooden charms there's a key and a keyhole and a bird a little sewing machine um, a little frame all fun little sewing notions love that that'll be another junctional kit for sure you'll have to step up production this one was so popular it sold out in just the pre-sales wow yeah that's awesome it is a fun kit i am loving working with it Definitely looking forward to more. So let's look at um, some of this other green paper. There we go, this one. Let's do this one. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see what our edge looks like here. I think this one needed to be cut down as well. It is just a little bit long. So I think these ones I'm gonna go ahead and tear so we can use this strip of paper and then we'll have that done. And when you do this and you have a paper like this, you could glue this paper to the next one behind it and make a pocket um, if you feel like you have plenty of sides. See, this one's sticking out way far, so just going to go ahead and we could fold it over, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just tear it down. And you can tear it to whatever size you want it to go to. And I love getting these um, kind of fun different tears. Now for sure there's 11 of us that will want one because we are suckers for some good kits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Okay, so let's see, let's see. And it is really cool in your junk journals to have a lot of varying um, sizes of pages that stick out, at least I think so. You know, there are books where it is nice to keep everything clean and linear and similar and measured, uh, but then it is fun to just let loose and have a book that just um, has a little bit of everything and all of that fun texture. So don't be afraid to make books that are all a little bit different. Um, that one, is that one long? This one's long. And when you're tearing these and you're trying to get that extra like peeled look, this one's more of a craft, but it kind of feels thicker, almost like a chipboard cardstock, but it's craft. And I'm just kind of tearing it slow and letting it like separate so I can get that fun feel. And then it'll be even more fun to put some mulberry paper next to that and have an even cooler edge. So, okay, so that one's good. This one's a little bit long too. I think we'll just go ahead and tear this one down. You can, like I said, you can cut them, you can fold them, you can um, do all kinds of things to them to make them all uh, uniquely your own. Okay, there's that one. This one's already ripped, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it apart there. Okay, and this one was gonna be that pocket for the other uh, journal cards. So let's go ahead and just put that one in real quick. We'll just ink these edges.
you guys are definitely going to want to keep your eyes out for all of these beautiful paper pads and collections that Kay has just received in. I've seen some sneak peeks and oh my gosh, I can't wait to get my hands on some of them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Let's see, did I tear? I didn't tear this one. So this one's still full length. So let's go ahead and fold this one. Sometimes I like to make a little fold over the edge of the paper, just the slightest fold. And it's a really great place to put some ribbon or a little scrap of extra paper. Adds a little protection to the edge of your papers. And again, it's all about adding interest. So um, it does make it a little more interesting. You can put eyelets at the top or the bottom or even do eyelets all along this little trim. Make your own little trim. And especially if you're doing something steampunk, adding in, you know, these little uh, charms and wooden elements and different, you know, different fun metal pieces <clears throat> is definitely neat and something fun to do. So you can see it didn't, um, it didn't take a lot there, but it did add some extra interest to the side of the page. This side will be a pocket, so we'll go ahead and put that in place. I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down as well. Ooh, we could stick some fun. Maybe we could put some fun um, mulberry paper. I am a sucker for mulberry paper, you guys. I absolutely love it. That would be fun. Okay, so I'm not going to glue this one down yet. I'm going to glue, I'm going to glue this. And then we'll go back and get that green paper in there. I didn't forget. It's like squirrel. <laughs> I realized the edges of my papers needed to be taken care of before I could glue in some pages there. Okay. So this one is a pocket over here. And I didn't cut a, a notch. You don't always have to cut a notch. It's, some people, you know, might not like the notch. Um, I usually try to put in some kind of a notch or something or let the tag or whatever it is hang out so that people know there's something there. Okay. So. In the kit there is all kinds of fun mulberry papers. And um, that copper petallics paper is just absolutely stunning. I love it too. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tear down a little piece of this. Um, now, usually when I tear mulberry paper, I like to get it wet. Um, in this instance, I'm not gonna do that just because I'm gonna glue it right in and I just wanna take this little sliver off the edge here, make a little trim piece. And I love the colors. It just goes really, really well. Now, if it's not, um, if it's not tearing easily for you, do just, spritz just a little hair of water on there and it will start separating those fibers. But look at all that goodness that it gives you. So much fun texture. Quit. You know what? This mulberry paper is available on the website. A lot of the pieces from this kit you guys are available individually. So um, I'm not sure exactly which ones are not available but you can definitely go through and pick out um, some of the things that are available. The uh, Petallics paper, the copper color that I have in here, I believe is available individually as well. Yeah, see how, see how fun that is? Oh, I love that. Then we could even put some ribbon over here because we've got some really great ribbon. Yes, yeah, see, the mulberry paper is available and it's amazing. I love it. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. You want to keep your glue really thin if you are doing uh, mulberry paper. It doesn't, it, it is thin, it's fibrous, you can almost see through it. Um, you don't need a lot of adhesive. And it will get just a little bit sticky while, if you're using a wet glue. So just make sure you give it plenty of time to dry. So right there, you know, if you, if you d don't want to lose some of the ends from here, you can tear this off and not have a fold. I'm just going to let it fold over because I want the focus more to be up here. Ooh, 
yes. Uh, mulberry paper in a beach book is definitely a plus. Love it, love it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this down now. Got my mulberry paper in there. This will just make a fun little edge here. And we can add some of our ribbon on top. A fun way to make kind of a, a cluster using the page itself. So here we go. And you might even have to clip this and let it dry. I don't know. Yeah, probably going to have to clip it. And so also here in the center, we still have some pieces from the rice paper. We could add some more of these fun little pops of color like this one. I love this one. And you can add these to the bottoms of your pages as well so that there is still plenty of room to write. All right, I'm just clipping this here just because I want it to dry. All right, so what we're going to do is we will go ahead and... Um, now this, this page is the end of my signature, so... I want to make sure what I'm doing with this one is probably what I'm going to do with this one, but I think I'm just going to tear them down. Oh, exclusive to this group. They love exclusive, Kay. These are my ladies, um, and most of them, there's 10 or 11 of them that kind of work in their own private group, and then most of them are in my group as well. Um, yeah, definitely write down items used. Keep a little post-it note or a little idea book. Any of that is good stuff. Yes, and most of these ladies work together. Like I said, there's 10 or 11 of them that work together. Um, they don't, I don't think they live all close by though. So it's it's great. It's an online group that, of them and it's um, kind of exclusive. So they love they love those little things they can do together. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and tear that one. I'm gonna tear this one. And then I think we'll mostly have our pages to the right size, mostly. <laughs> kind of feeling like a tearing mood today, so I'm tearing everything. Here we go. And if you tear something and you decide you want it back later, you can't exactly have it back, but it's just paper, guys. You can. Um, you know, if I decided, oh my gosh, that looks terrible and now I need something else. Well, I can glue another piece of paper here and just add on to it. So no worries. No worries in junk journaling. Okay. And then this one too. Go ahead and tear this one a little further down so it's a little smaller. How did we do? Got most of it. And you can see there's still a few pages that are longer. That's my one page that's drying. And it's okay to have pages sticking out too. If you don't like that though, definitely just keep tearing or keep folding or whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah, uh, this one's a floating spine, so you can even take these out and you can trim them if you want them to have a nice straight edge. You can do that too. I kind of like these torn edges because then I can more ink them and they provide some extra texture. Yes, I know. Yeah, it would be nice to get all together in one, one like real time place instead of just online. It would be so much fun to have like a get together of some sort. I would love that. Okay, so let's go ahead and tear this down. All right, and then you can use these scraps on other bits of the paper as well, because look at this beautiful tear that it's making. And now if we add our oxide inks on top of that, that will be just fabulous. Okay, so I think we're pretty good to go here. Yeah, that's a lot better. I think I still have one or two that's a little bit longer than what I want. And you can decide this at the beginning or you can leave it for the end. Um, like I said, I sometimes will tear them, sometimes I fold them, sometimes I 
um, leave them alone to add trim so that it adds all kinds of fun texture. And you can do any of those things. That one's just a little longer. Go and see how they kind of layer when you've got them all torn together. I love that. <clears throat> okay, so now there was somewhere right here. I was gonna put some fun green papers. Okay, and I had it out. There it is. Distracted for a moment, but totally did not forget. <laughs> All right, so this one, I think I'm just gonna leave it straight um, because we can use it for a photo mount or a good spot for, for a little bit of some journaling. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to leave this, this edge straight here. We could still, um, you can still make it a tuck, which is kind of smart to do really because you get double duty for your paper, um, meaning you can use this long spot to write on, you can use it to put a photo on, and then if you still have a tuck spot back here, you can put a journaling card or even another photo. So it is kind of nice to get those um, multi-purpose uses out of there. Ink some of the edges. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go ahead and glue that in. So I am going to make it a tuck spot, I think. I don't necessarily have to tuck anything in it, but um, you know, it is a good use of the space and gives you one extra place to tuck, you know, pieces of ephemera or extra photos or whatever you want to do. So go ahead and put that just right down in there. So that's just going to glue on those three sides to make the pocket. And we can still take some ink and put it all along this edge. I love inking edges like this because it is like, um, it's got that fun extra texture. I'm totally a texture girl. I like to add different textures and look at different textures and ink and paint and make a mess. <laughs> and you can still stamp, you can add any, you know, more of that stamping, more of your oxide ink, all of those things. All of the things, guys, all of the things. And we could even still take another piece of this here and put it here if we wanted to. I want to try and keep it a little bit cleaner though so that if we want to put a photo we can. And I think that green just looks great. And look at how this is going as it's drying. It's just turning really pretty. Sorry there's a shadow there. And this one is a uh, black paper so you can use this for writing with like a metallic pen or a jelly pen um, or you know you can just put some photos or paper or whatever you want to do right over it. Okay, so we've got some things here in the second signature. That is always great. Um, always worries me that I'm gonna miss putting some fun things in that second signature. So let's see, I've got this little frame. I made a little clock one too, and I don't know what I did with it. I colored it with ink, the little wooden piece. There was a beautiful little clock. Um, You can also add extra layers like this and then just put one of your wooden pieces or your stickers or something there. Um, sometimes I'll leave it for a different session. You know, when I'm working in here, I'll work for a little while and then um, 
you know, next time maybe I'll be adding more mulberry paper or I'll be adding more trims or whatever that it is. <clears throat> Guys, I don't know what is going on with my voice. There we go. Okay, that's a little better. All right, and um, if you are somebody who clears away all of your stuff after every time you craft, good for you. I wish I was. Um, however, make sure that while you're making a book, you keep your scraps at least until you're done making the book. Um, I'm kind of a craft hoarder and I keep everything, but um, <laughs> probably too much. But um, make sure that you at least keep it enough until you... Um, you're done with your book because you'll be able to use all those little bits and goodness. Okay, so this one I think can just go right here. And I'm just going to put in this extra little pocket here. Now, now with these ones, when you do this, you can make it, you know, this could be a double pocket. So we could have our pocket here and a pocket here. And then you still have room to either do some journaling or put one of those. I'm going to put that sticker. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we're not journaling there, guys. We're putting the sticker. The sticker has to go in. It's beautiful. All right, here we go. So let's do this. We're going to ink everything. And this is just some cream cardstock that I had. Nothing fancy. Just a scrap cut down to a journaling card. We're going to make it fancy with one of these awesome stickers, though. I guess we don't really need to ink this one, but why not? <clears throat> and then, love adding ink on these ones. And you can even run just a little bit of this right along that seam there. Just like that, and then kind of let it soak a little bit, but you can also still spritz it with water and let it run. Yes, this is adding water to the book, but it will dry. It will be okay. I promise. Look at all this fun oxi oxidization that we're getting. We can wipe this off and we're getting all these cool drips. Love it. Love it. Love it. <clears throat> and that's going to be right on our edge. It's kind of, uh, the oxidization part is going to kind of make this chalky look. And I love that. <clears throat> okay, so let's add some of this. And we're even getting some stowaway ink there on the back of that, on that black paper. And I kind of like that too, so I'm just going to leave it there. All right, we'll add in some of this vintage photo just on the edges. We can even add more as it dries. Go ahead and glue this down. And again, I'm going to glue this one in the pocket form. Now you can... Let's glue this one so that the pocket is at the top because we haven't done many like that. We'll just vary it up here. So then we'll have a top tuck and a side tuck, which is cool. Okay, so we'll put this right in here. Love that. Aw, Sherry, you're so sweet. We should have a craft retreat. That would be awesome. Oh, there we go. This is the noodle box book. Shawnee used uh, elastic. Yes, I did use elastic to hold in these uh, these signatures. I'll show you that in just one second. Let's just get this glued in here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm excited to see that sticker on here. So I'm going to glue this one. This will be our side tuck. So now we've got one at the top and one at the side. Okay. 
And then um, I'll need to be making some tags to go in all of these pockets. That is definitely one thing that happens. <laughs> you make all of these pockets and then you forget to put things in them. Um, <laughs> but I was also learning that it's okay to leave some of them, um, you know, empty because whoever is working in the book might want to put some things of their own in there. I think I'm going to put this a little bit sideways. I don't know. Let's see. I want to use this big sticker. I'm determined to use this big sticker. I love it. Uh, where's my scissors? Now, like anything, you can cut it down and make it your own. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this edge over here so that it fits a little bit better where I need it to go. Where to find certain things? Yeah, just getting used to, um, you know, a new a new site can be that way. That's kind of how I feel about my Facebook right now. Ugh. I was already used to where everything was, and then they went, guess what? We changed things all around. Like, no. No, don't do that. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, I think I like it just right there. So this page... Um, is still functional even though we have this sticker as a huge part of the page um, and by functional I mean it's got two pockets so you can still put a journaling card or a photo in there oh that's probably because I cut it because the other ones just peeled right apart very nicely um, so yeah it still has a function you can still get your uh, photos or journaling in on this page as well there we go. I think I got it. Thank you. Yeah, and you can do, um, you know, you could still add some mulberry trim up here. It wouldn't um, detract from the function of the page. Uh-oh, Sharon not feeling well. Yeah, Sharon, feel better. Sending well wishes. Okay, so this one is a little bit larger. You just want to take it nice and slow so you don't tear any pieces that you don't want torn. There we go. And then also when you're putting it down here, just kind of do nice and slow and one area at a time. I'm letting it kind of go off the pocket in a couple of different places. That's okay. We're just smoothing it down. And then I'm going to go back in with this ink and just add some ink and some spots here. Kind of dampen some of that white edge a little bit. I do kind of like this area a little brighter. It looks like the light is hitting right there. Just got kind of a nice bright image in there. And I think that's fun. So now we've got a spot here and a spot up here that we can put some things. If we want to. And I just love that. And then back here, I'm going to try and spread this out just a little bit. I love using this oxide ink though, guys. If you haven't played with it fully, get it out. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. Love it. Love it. Aw, thanks, Mary. You guys are so sweet. Treat me so well. Love it. Now, this is another one of uh, Prima's little stamps. And I like using this one. It's got just some little words or letters or whatever they are but I like adding those you could still use those little splatters too if you wanted to these stamps are just so great especially if you're building your stash because they're so inexpensive and they work so well um, just a dollar 99 and look how much extra I'll hold that up to the camera here you guys can see a little better um, just look at that little pop of interest that it made there love that so some really goodness in that. I love this craft uh, paper as well. No, it just stuck right down. 
Um, no problems at all with this sticker adhering. It is a case that it's a vellum sticker and I believe they're from Japan and they are just awesome. Um, I did go ahead and just, you know, kind of crease it down, make sure that it's nice and adhered, but it just stuck very nicely. Um, it wasn't overly sticky like to the fact where it was sticking to itself or any of that but it definitely was uh, perfectly sticky enough that it stuck where I wanted it to go and stayed there just great and I love it and you get quite a few of them uh, in this kit I think I'm gonna go ahead and add one more here this one is like a little what does it say it says something hold on maybe we'll know what it is when I peel it off <laughs> Yeah, these are great, super fun little stickers. And I think these are available on the website as well, just individually. I'll just put this one over here. Oh, this one's like supposed to look like a bank check or something. Something National Bank. Super cute, love it. And we could layer just one more if we really wanted to, make a little cluster out of them. Ooh, I think I like it this way. Uh, the stamps are available from White Rose Crafts. They're Prima stamps, and uh, they're just little background stamps. There's all kinds of them. The one that came with this kit is fun little splatters, and I love that too. I've used it all throughout the book. Just like this. And then there's so many other ones. Yes, they're all available on the White Rose Crafts website. And like I said, they're just a couple dollars, so they're, they're so much fun to add to your stash and, and use again and again, because um, there we go, got it. I think that's also what I like about these stickers is they're not very difficult to use as far as peeling. Now I do want some things to overlap here, there we go. So that one is just a little label sticker, which is really awesome because it gives you a couple little lines. You can write a date or you can write a name or you can just leave it like it is. Super great. Look at that. Fun little cluster. Finnebear, yeah. Finnebear is, pre is Prima. Uh, Finnebear is a designer for Prima, like, kind of like Tim Holtz is for Ranger. Um, and the products from Finnebear are some of my absolute favorites. I love them, love them, love them. Okay, you guys, well, we have played with ink. We have played with these fun vellum stickers. We have torn a bunch of edges. We have added some charms. Uh, what else have we done? We covered some, covered some pages here, made some pockets. And the time has just slipped by. It's amazing how it just goes by when you're having fun. We've added some eyelets. Um, and our book is definitely getting there. It's not quite where I would consider it done yet, but we have a lot of fun things in here. And like I said, these books, as far as when they're done, really just depends on when you want it to be done. Um, I like to make sure every page has been touched a little bit. And uh, yeah, fun stamps, right? Um, and that I have a variety of textures and colors and... Um, all kinds of fun pockets, pages to write, uh, little journaling cards, and all kinds of things here. So um, I will go through and add ribbon and probably some tags and more fun stuff and just keep adding my papers uh, to, to the pages here and, you know, decorating these little, like, things like this, like this little index card that gives you a place you can even put a photo here or you can journal and then just tuck it right back in here. Um, all kinds of fun things you can do. Now this one, I may just go ahead and add some eyelets just because I think that's fun. This is just here for it to dry. Um, you can go through and add in all kinds of ephemera or embellishments or whatever that you have. And if you don't have anything like that, there is no harm and foul or even sacrifice to the look of your book of just using what was in your kit. There are so many charms and little wooden pieces, so much paper, um, all kinds of fun things that you can do. Now, I like to get a little darker edge on some of these ones. Um, if you do this with your ink pad, be warned, it's not really great for it because you can get paper cuts on your ink pads. But look at that nice, bright, deep edge that you get, and I kind of love that. So I do that a little bit here, too. 
I'm a bad influence. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Disclaimer first. Um, but, you know, go through. Use your ink. Use your stickers. This would be a perfect spot for some more of these vellum stickers. I think they would show up beautifully. Um, so, yeah, lots of fun things to do in this book. I love, love, love this butterfly vellum sticker. So, so much fun here. I hope you guys will um, give some of these fun techniques and products a try. Yeah, I do. I try to add my, I try to make sure whoever is viewing my books knows that I, I personally took care of each and every single page. I, that is one of my, my personal things I like to do. Um, I don't want anybody wondering, hey, did she forget a page? Like ever. <laughs> Hi, Laura. We are just about finishing up for the day. Um, but you can definitely catch the replay and then eventually this video will be made available on uh, the White Rose Crafts LLC YouTube page as well. If you haven't checked out that YouTube page, definitely go over there and uh, say hello, leave us a comment, subscribe, watch all some videos. You can watch them in order. Um, I do have all of my White Rose Wednesdays over there. And then some of the uh, girls from the design team have also put products or uh, products have also put videos over there too so there's even more fun uh things and tips and tricks you can do with different products so awesome thanks so much all right you guys well until next wednesday i hope you guys are having a great week and i will see you next time here on white rose wednesdays ah thank you guys you guys have a really great rest of the week <laughs>